divination from Latin divinare, to foresee, to be inspired by a god. Related to divinus, divine is the attempt to gain insight into a question or situation by way of an occultic, standardized process or ritual. Used in various forms throughout history, diviners ascertain their interpretations of how a querent should proceed by reading signs, events, or omens, or through alleged contact with a supernatural agency. Divination can be seen as a systematic method with which to organize what appear to be disjointed, random facets of existence such that they provide insight into a problem at hand. If a distinction is to be made between divination and fortune-telling, divination has a more formal or ritualistic element and often contains a more social character, usually in a religious context, as seen in traditional African medicine. Fortune-telling, on the other hand, is a more everyday practice for personal purposes. Particular divination methods vary by culture and religion. Divination is dismissed by the scientific community and skeptics as being superstition. In the second century, Lucian devoted a witty essay to the career of a charlatan, Alexander the False Prophet, trained by one of those who advertise enchantments, miraculous incantations, charms for your love affairs, visitations for your enemies, disclosures of buried treasure, and successions to estates. Even though most Romans believed in prophetic dreams and charms. Topic. Categories Topic History Topic Antiquity The Oracle of Amun at the Shiva Oasis was made famous when Alexander the Great visited it after conquering Egypt from Persia in 332 BC. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 10 to 12 or Leviticus chapter 19 verse 26 can be interpreted as categorically forbidding divination. However, some would claim that divination is indeed practiced in the Bible, such as in Exodus chapter 28, when the Urim and Thummim are mentioned. Some would also say that Gideon also practiced divination, though when he uses a piece of fleece or wool in Judges chapter 6 verses 36 to 40, he is not attempting to predict the outcome of an important battle, rather, he is communicating with God. Communicating with God through prayer may in some cases be considered divination, both are open, typically two-way conversations with God. In addition, the method of casting lots used in Joshua chapter 14 verses 1 to 5 and Joshua chapter 18 verses 1 to 10 to divide the conquered lands of Canaan between the 12 tribes is not seen by some as divination but as done at the behest of God numbers chapter 26 verse 55 both oracles and seers in ancient Greece practiced divination oracles were the conduits for the gods on earth their prophecies were understood to be the will of the gods verbatim because of the high demand for oracle consultations and the oracle's limited work schedule, they were not the main source of divination for the ancient Greeks. That role fell to the seers Mauntice in Greek. Seers were not in direct contact with the gods, instead, they were interpreters of signs provided by the gods. Seers used many methods to explicate the will of the gods including ecstispice, bird signs, etc. They were more numerous than the oracles and did not keep a limited schedule, thus, they were highly valued by all Greeks, not just those with the capacity to travel to Delphi or other such distant sites. The disadvantage to seers was that only direct yes or no questions could be answered. Oracles could answer more generalized questions, and seers often had to perform several sacrifices in order to get the most consistent answer. For example, if a general wanted to know if the omens were proper for him to advance on the enemy, he would ask his seer both that question and if it were better for him to remain on the defensive. If the seer gave consistent answers, the advice was considered valid. At battle, generals would frequently ask seers at both the campground a process called the hera and at the battlefield, called the sphagia. The hearer entailed the seer slaughtering a sheep and examining its liver for answers regarding a more generic question. The sphagia involved killing a young female goat by slitting its throat and noting the animal's last movements and blood flow. The battlefield sacrifice only occurred when two armies prepared for battle against each other. Neither force would advance until the seer revealed appropriate omens. 
Because the seers had such power over influential individuals in ancient Greece, many were skeptical of the accuracy and honesty of the seers. The degree to which seers were honest depends entirely on the individual seers. Despite the doubt surrounding individual seers, the craft as a whole was well regarded and trusted by the Greeks. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Middle Ages and Early Modern Period. The divination method of casting lots, chloromancy, was used by the remaining 11 disciples of Jesus in Acts chapter 1 verses 23 to 26 to select a replacement for Judas Iscariot. Therefore, divination was arguably an accepted practice in the early church. However, divination became viewed as a pagan practice by Christian emperors during ancient Rome. In 692, the Quinisex Council, also known as the Council in Trullo, in the Eastern Orthodox Church, passed canons to eliminate pagan and divination practices. Fortune telling and other forms of divination were widespread through the Middle Ages. In the Constitution of 1572 and Public Regulations of 1661 of Ker Saxony, capital punishment was used on those predicting the future. Laws forbidding divination practice continue to this day. Smaland is famous for Arsgang, a practice which occurred until the early 19th century in some parts of Smaland. Generally occurring on Christmas and New Year's Eve, it is a practice in which one would fast and keep themselves away from light in a room until midnight to then complete a set of complex events to interpret symbols encountered throughout the journey to foresee the coming year. Topic: <laughs> Mesoamerica. Divination was a central component of ancient Mesoamerican religious life. Many Aztec gods, including central creator gods, were described as diviners and were closely associated with sorcery. Tezcatlipoca is the patron of sorcerers and practitioners of magic. His name means, smoking mirror, a reference to a device used for divinatory scrying. In the Mayan Popol Vuh, the creator gods Xmu Kane and X Piacop perform divinatory hand casting during the creation of people. Every civilization that developed in pre Columbian Mexico, from the Olmecs to the Aztecs, practiced divination in daily life, both public and private. Scrying through the use of reflective water surfaces, mirrors, or the casting of lots were among the most widespread forms of divinatory practice. Visions derived from hallucinogens were another important form of divination, and are still widely used among contemporary diviners of Mexico. Among the more common hallucinogenic plants used in divination are morning glory, jimson weed, and peyote. Topic. Contemporary folk religion Topic. Asia Buddhists in Asia divine by different methods. Topic. Japan Although Japan retains a history of traditional and local methods of divination, such as omayodo, contemporary divination in Japan, called uranai, derives from outside sources. Contemporary methods of divination in Japan include both Western and Chinese astrology, geomancy or feng shui, tarot cards, I Ching book of changes, and physiognomy methods of reading the body to identify traits. Rather than indicate cultural appropriation, understood as inappropriate acts of appropriation by a dominant culture in the context of colonization or inequality, Japanese divination represents instances of unique and creative amalgamation of cultural elements. This concept may be referred to as syncretism, creolization, or cultural hybridity. In the example of feng shui, Japanese adaptations of feng shui extend outside the traditional form, featuring such hybrids as car feng shui, workplace feng shui, makeup feng shui, and even toilet feng shui. Topic: <laughs> Personality types. Personality typing as a form of divination has been prevalent in Japan since the 1980s. Various methods exist for divining personality type. Each attempt to reveal glimpses of an individual's destiny, productive and inhibiting traits, future parenting technique, and compatibility in marriage. 
Personality type is increasingly important for young Japanese, who consider personality the driving factor of compatibility. Given the ongoing marriage drought and birth rate decline in Japan, and import to Japan, Chinese zodiac signs based on birth year in 12 year cycles rat, ox, tiger, hare, dragon, snake, horse, sheep, monkey, cock, dog, and boar are frequently combined with other forms of divination, such as so called celestial types based on the planets Saturn, Venus, Mars. Jupiter, Mercury, or Uranus. Personality can also be divined using cardinal directions, the four elements water, earth, fire, air, and yin-yang. Names can also lend important personality information under name classification which asserts that names bearing certain Japanese vowel sounds a, I, U, e, o, share common characteristics. Numerology, which utilizes methods of diving birth numbers from significant numbers such as birth date, may also reveal character traits of individuals. Individuals can also assess their own and others' personalities according to physical characteristics. Blood type remains a popular form of divination from physiology. Stemming from Western influences, body reading or ninsu, determines personality traits based on body measurements. The face is the most commonly analyzed feature, with eye size, pupil shape, mouth shape, and eyebrow shape representing the most important traits. An upturned mouth may be cheerful, and a triangle eyebrow may indicate that someone is strong-willed. Methods of assessment in daily life may include self-taken measurements or quizzes. As such, magazines targeted at women in their early to mid-twenties feature the highest concentration of personality assessment guides. There are approximately 144 different women's magazines, known as Nihon Zashi Koukoku Kyokai, published in Japan aimed at this audience. Topic. Japanese tarot The adaptation of the Western divination method of tarot cards into Japanese culture presents a particularly unique example of contemporary divination as this adaptation mingles with Japan's robust visual culture. Japanese tarot cards are created by professional artists, advertisers, and fans of tarot. One tarot card collector claimed to have accumulated more than 1,500 Japan-made decks of tarot cards. Japanese tarot cards fall into diverse categories such as inspiration tarot, Rikan taroto, I Ching tarot, Ekasan taroto, spiritual tarot, Superichwaru taroto, Western tarot, Seiyo taroto, and Eastern tarot, Toyo taroto. The images on tarot cards may come from images from Japanese popular culture, such as characters from manga and anime including Hello Kitty, or may feature cultural symbols. Tarot cards may adapt the images of Japanese historical figures, such as High Priestess Himiko or Imperial Court Wizard Abe no Sime CE. Still others may feature images of cultural displacement, such as English knights, pentagrams, the Jewish Torah, or invented glyphs. The introduction of such cards began by the 1930s and reached prominence 1970s. Japanese tarot cards were originally created by men, often based on the Rider Waite Smith Tarot published by the Rider Company in London in 1909. Since, the practice of Japanese tarot has become overwhelmingly feminine and intertwined with kawaii culture. Referring to the cuteness of tarot cards, Japanese model Kurumi Yanina was quoted as saying, Because the images are cute, even holding them is enjoyable. While these differences exist, Japanese tarot cards function similarly to their Western counterparts. Cards are shuffled and cut into piles then used to forecast the future, for spiritual reflection, or as a tool for self-understanding. <laughs> Taiwan As seen previous to this section, many different cultures around the world use divination as a way of understanding the future. The most common act of divination in the Bao'an village in Taiwan is called the Po. Bao'an is not the actual name of the village, but for privacy purposes that is what it will be called. The Po translated to English means moon boards. The Po consists of two wood or bamboo blocks cut into the shape of a crescent moon. The one edge is rounded while the other is flat, the two are mirror images. Both crescents are held out in one's palms and while kneeling, they are raised to the forehead level. Once in this position the blocks are dropped and the future can be understood depending on their landing. 
If both fall flat side up or both fall rounded side up, that can be taken as a failure of the deity to agree. If the blocks land one rounded and one flat, the deity agrees. Laughing po is when rounded sides land down and they rock before coming to a standstill. Negative po is seen when the flat sides fall downward and abruptly stop, this indicates anger. When there is a positive fall, is called sacred po, although the negative falls are not usually taken seriously. As the blocks are being dropped the question is said in a murmur, and if the answer is yes, the blocks are dropped again. To make sure the answer is definitely a yes, the blocks must fall in a yes position three times in a row. A more serious type of divination is the kia or. There is a small wooden chair, and around the sides of the chair are small pieces of wood that can move up and down in their sockets, this causes a clicking sounds when the chair is moved in any way. Two men hold this chair by its legs before an altar, during this incense are being burned, and the supernatural agent is asked to descend into the chair. It is seen that it is in the chair by an onset of motion. Eventually the chair crashes onto a table prepared with wood chips and burlap. The characters on the table are then traced and these are said to be written by the god who possessed the chair. These characters are then interpreted. In Japan, divination methods include futomani from the Shinto tradition. Topic: Africa Divination is one of the tenets of Sura religion. However, only those who have been initiated as Saltigs, the Sura high priests and priestesses, can divine the future. These are the hereditary rain priests, whose role is both religious and medicinal, specialized diviners called Obgega, Doctor of Oguega Oracle, as well as Oboran Miller, Doctor of Oran Miller Oracle, from the Edo people of West Africa for thousands have used divination as a means of foretelling the past, present and future. These diviners are initiated and trained in IHA divination of either Omanigban or Oranmila Benina The Yoruba people of West Africa are internationally known for having developed the I4 system, an intricate process of divination that is performed by an Awo, an initiated priest or priestess of Arunmila, the spirit of the Yoruba oracle. Topic: See also Methods of divination Prophet Prophetic dreams Sandabele